What's going on? This is Marcus and in today's video we're going to talk about purchasing a house things that you need to do that are really outside of the book. I honestly went on YouTube and I didn't find anyone who were talking about these things but these are things that I think are outside of the book that you should do that will definitely help when it comes to making any decision on any property that you want to buy with. Hey, before we get started, if you're interested in following my debt-free journey and learning about finance, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Definitely like because it'll help the channel grow. Here we go to story time. I went to buy my residence. I looked for, uh, uh, we looked at a few places. I think the good thing was, uh, typically I don't honestly care about the residence. I mean, I don't really care about the countertops and all that. As long as it has this particular amount of space, this many rooms, and I got a place where I could get the hell away from everybody. As long as it got those things and it falls within the price range, everything else is completely up to her. You decide as you see fit. I'm really not too worried about it. As we were looking through properties, we already went in knowing that, hey, we're not really going to fall in love with any place because we may keep it for five to seven years. We may uh, convert it into an investment property. We really didn't know. But we knew that we wanted to get a place because in D.C. as significantly cheaper in most instances to purchase a house as opposed to rent a house. So we wanted to look for something that was a single family home, detached, had a nice size yard, and had off street parking. If you can get off street parking in D.C., you're really ahead of the game. And so as we started to look, we didn't really find anything that we wanted, so we started to look at foreclosures. Now, keep in mind, I don't live next to Barack Obama and none of the big time ballers like that in D.C., so I stay in a neighborhood that's a relatively up and coming neighborhood. Um, I would probably say the average age of my neighbors is 60. <laughs> I would probably say the average age of my neighbors is 60. Nothing against people who in their 60s. I, I definitely want to live to be 60 and past that. But uh, it's a relatively decent community. Every now and then you get a few stragglers that may walk by. But for the most part, there's really no drama. We had no instances, no instances or issues of crime or none of that stuff. A lot of people move to D.C and they hear these stories from these old school people who lived in D.C. in the 80s or people who aren't from the city so they really don't know the landscape of D.C. so they always say move somewhere to Maryland and move somewhere to Virginia and those are good options but nothing in Maryland or Virginia is really messing with the property value in D.C. I had a residency requirement for the job and plus I also knew if I bought a property in D.C. I could potentially hold on to it for a while and it'll be a great shot at having a million dollar residence so that was the route that I decided to go. So I was looking through foreclosures and I did a search. I scaled out things. I want at least this much square footage, this many rooms, this many bathrooms. I put all those search terms in and so I proceeded to get all of these hits. And as I started getting hits, I identified maybe five that, you know, my wife really liked and fell within our price range because they were foreclosures, but we were able to see what those properties had previously listed for. Once we narrowed it down to about five potential choices, uh, then I dug a little bit deeper. I looked at how long these properties were in foreclosure, how long they were vacant. Most of them are owned by a bank because they went through foreclosure, but the key is how long because in identifying how long the property is owned by the bank, banks are not in the business of home ownership, they're in the business of getting rid of it, hooking somebody in on a mortgage, and getting that stream of income coming in off the interest. So we actually found a foreclosure that met all of the requirements that we're looking for. In addition to that, it looked as if uh, this property was owned by the bank for a significant amount of time. You can look through the history and we were able to find that the property was owned for maybe a two or three year period. After that, it was sold, owned again for maybe two years. Then after that, uh, they were foreclosed on and upon that foreclosure, the bank held it and they had this property for maybe 18 to 24 months. So I knew the bank was itching to really get rid of the property. That was really how I got such a, a, a great deal on the property. Uh, the property was listed for significantly lower because it was a foreclosure and it had been on the market for a while. I mean, but that gave me crazy cause to pause because the house is a nice house. It's 3,000 square feet, six bedrooms. Uh, three and a half bathrooms, over three floors of office. So I was like, what the, it gotta be something going on. Maybe the foundation jacked up or something, but 
you know, that was really how we did that search and how we found that property. It was already listed a lot lower because it was a foreclosure and the bank had it for a while, so they were lowering the price, lowering the price, trying to get rid of it. Uh, no one was biting, so we decided to jump in. Now I'm going to talk about the five things that you have to do when you're looking at a residence that I haven't seen anyone talking about. If you all seen someone talking about this, you let me know in the comments, but I haven't seen anyone talking about it. Everyone knows, the first thing everyone knows is that you have to get an inspection. You have to get an inspector to come out to look at the property. They're going to look at the roof. They're going to look at the foundation. They're going to look at the inside. They may look at the appliances. But one thing that your typical home inspector isn't going to do because it's outside of the scope of their job, they aren't going to do an external survey of the sewage pipes that leave from your residence that you're looking at and go into the city pipes. So that is a really, really big thing. Most homes have external access to those sewer lines, but again, that's outside of the scope of what any home inspector is going to do. So what I would advise you to do is, once you narrow your place down to one or two places where you're really thinking about making a firm offer and trying to secure this home, whether it's investment or for your primary residence, pay the 250 to 350 bucks to have a plumbing expert come out to take a look at your external pipes. What they'll do is, They'll take a look at your pipes, they'll send the wire down with a camera on it, they'll be able to identify if any of the pipes are offset, uh, if any of the pipes have rust, or maybe on the verge of collapsing due to shift movements in the earth. And when you think about it, when you have these type of external things, most homeowner insurance policy does not cover external pipes leaving outside of the home. They only focus on things within the confines of four walls of the home. So make sure you spend the $250 to $300 to get a survey done of the pipes. I'll tell you, that's one I learned the hard way. I didn't get that done. And then I subsequently found out why the property was vacant for a while is because it had pipe problems that needed to be fixed. Now, I will tell you that the repair on those pipes, I think it was seven to $8,000. I really can't recall offhand. Uh, fortunately, we were in a position where we had the funds to actually get it repaired, but had we spent the $250, $300 up front, we would have known that the pipes had bellied and that it was an issue. And essentially what bellied pipes are is, uh, pipes, as all pipes, they leave your home, they go through your front yard into the city uh, sewage connection system. Well, over time, due to shifts in the earth or foundation adjustments or whatever it is, the pipes may become offset, so one piece of the pipe may drop down lower. And when that happens, that place in the pipe is where you have a buildup of sewage as it comes from your house going to the city line and could cause a catastrophe in your home. We were fortunate we actually did find this out because of a flood, but it wasn't a crazy flood where it was... Can I say that? It wasn't a crazy flood where it was stuff everywhere and crap all over the floor. It was just a little bit of water that... We had to get replaced, had to get some floors replaced, and insurance company took care of that. Number two thing that you have to look at when you're purchasing the residence, uh, local legislation. You have to look at what's on the books with the local legislation in the city, town, wherever it is, parish, whatever it is that you're buying this home at. Uh, so, again, where I purchased my home at is east of the river, as a phrase they like to say in D.C., and it's... Uh, up and coming area. So I actually looked at upcoming legislation. I saw that they had plans in place to do a lot of development in this particular area with regard to adding residential housing, commercial property, uh, movie theaters, additional grocery stores, even plans in the work for a hospital. So I knew that in a four to six year period, the development of this area was going to go up greatly, which would increase the property value. So that was definitely a big thing. You have to look at the legislation that's out there. A lot of times they have plans already in the works for those particular districts. You can reach out to your local elected officials. They will be able to tell you what plans they have and they want to put forward in place over the next two to three years or the particular length of their term and that'll give you great foresight into seeing how your property value is going to increase if you do decide to purchase this home. The number three thing that you have to look at is any permits that were made on file with the city. Uh, in order to get work done on most places, there have to be a permit. It has to be a permit to build. It has to be a permit to do certain types of repairs require permits. These permits are filed with most cities and counties, and you can search them online. So this will give you some insight 
to see what potential problems you know occur or what may have been new and the reason this is really important is because a lot of times there is work that is done in additions that are done to homes that aren't done with a permit people have rooms that they want to add on they find a contractor who will do it but the contractor doesn't file the permits with the city and that can create a whole nother list of headaches so definitely pull all the permits it'll allow you and give you visibility on you know work that was done when the house was built initially but any improvements or potential problems that may have been done. If you see that four or five permits were done to come dig up the front yard to look at the sewage pipes, it'll raise a red flag immediately. Like alarm spidey sensor should be going off in your head to tell you that this may be a problem down the road. So is this something that I want to actually invest my money? Yeah, so you have to take a look and check out those permits. Uh, I had a vacant lot across the street. I was able to pull the permits to see uh, what type of permit they had so I knew what type of structure they were going to build. It was either a single family home or uh, a duplex two homes with one shared wall, uh, which I was fine with. But if I would have looked and saw that the permit had uh, a 10 unit condo, no bueno. That would have been no good because y'all going to mess up my parking situation out front when I don't feel like pulling in the yard. So that would have been problematic. The next things, the next two things are, are, are I'll mention them and talk about them jointly because they both are important. So the first thing is you have to contact your local city register of deeds office. Now, when a property is being built, they have to file paperwork, the blueprints with the register of deeds. They'll find that paperwork. So the city or the county will have on file the original blueprints of the property so that when you do a walkthrough of the property, you know exactly how that property was supposed to look, how many rooms it was supposed to be, how many bathrooms, the size of the kitchen, everything down to the absolute most minute square inch of that house. It'll have the blueprint for how the original plan was when the house was built. Now, the reason that's important is because again in a lot of cities dc is one of them a lot of properties are up there my property was built in 2004 but you had properties from the 1970s 1960s old school properties where a lot of updates were done and as i said when i was talking about the permit a lot of times people get work done to these residences don't have sufficient permits but they get the work done anyway now this is why you need to go to the tax office uh, and I'll tell you, this is a great example. The reason you got to go to the tax office is because you have to see how that house was built for tax purposes over the past few years before you buy the property. This is how number three, looking at permits on file. Number four, getting the original blueprints to the register of deeds uh, in the city or county. And number five, looking at the tax office. This is how all these combine in tandem. Prior to making an offer in this house, we found and identified a nice house, beautiful house, nice size and everything. And so we thought, oh man, we're definitely going to put an offer in for this house. And this house had, I think, five or six bedrooms. I can't recall. But it was a two-floor house. You know those houses? You walk in the house, you had a stairwell, and you can go downstairs or upstairs. So that was the type of house this was. This house had five or six bedrooms. Three were upstairs. And the downstairs was amazing. It had a basement, a huge lounge area, and it had two or three bedrooms there. Uh, the first thing I was doing in the basement, I knocked on the walls because I wanted to hear how the walls were built so I could find out if these walls were just walls for the purposes of making room or whether these was uh, weight bearing walls. You know, as I'm going through, the first question I had was a lot of residences in DC are old. I actually pulled the tax record and when I looked at the tax record, this was only originally blueprinted as a three bedroom house. They're trying to sell it as a five or six bedroom house. And so the tax for tax purposes, it's being taxed as a three bedroom residence in DC. That's another thing that kind of raised my antennas that I had to buckle down and focus on. And so here you are, you have a person trying to sell a property that has five, that they assert had five to six bedrooms. But when I look at the blueprint uh, filed with the register of deeds from the original construction, it's only a three bedroom property and it's only been getting taxed as a three bedroom property. So I'm clearly thinking this construction is probably not authorized because if it was authorized, the tax office would have assessed the taxes for this home as a five or six bedroom, that is a three bedroom. Of course, the owner couldn't provide me anything. So let's just think about it. Let's say I would have purchased that home as a five bedroom home, but the paperwork at the register of deeds have it, has it listed as a three bedroom and the tax office has it listed as a three bedroom. Then I purchased this home, I own it, everything is going good. For some reason, the city decides they want to come out and just do an inspection of the home 
or for in the alternative I actually decide I want to get some work done when the inspector comes through to approve the new work that I have done they found all of this old work for these other two or three bedrooms that are out of compliance I run the risk of having to flip the bill for fines for not being in compliance and filing permits with the city worst of all I would run the risk of having to pay back taxes uh, so hey you had this place listed as a, a a five bedroom or six bedroom is actually a three bedroom, but you had these additional three bedrooms built that could give you all kinds of terrible tax implications. So you definitely don't want to do that. But that's an example of how all of these things come into play. These five things that I talked about, it'll help you save money, help you predict any potential problems. Or, or things that may be issues in the future. It'll help you evaluate the landscape of the neighborhood and the community. It'll give you the ability to do a fair assessment of how your property value will increase. So those are things that you really should consider. Let me know in the comments if y'all ever heard any of this or am I just a little bit overzealous. I appreciate you all tuning in. Like, subscribe, comment. If you comment, I'm definitely going to get back to you. Thank you all. Y'all take care. Peace.